This is a continuation of a discussion we had earlier around the chapter that I wrote in the book, Guiding K-3 Writers to Independence. The title of my chapter in this book is Engaging Children in a Writing Process Through Community Writing. During the first part of our discussion, we talked a little bit about the framework for literacy lessons that teachers, including Jennifer Beck, the teacher that I talk about in my chapter, use in order to teach their children about being readers and writers. We then talked about the writing process itself and especially focused on community writing. And we talked about why we coined the term community writing as an umbrella term to include both shared writing and interactive writing. In this chapter, um, I'll share with you all the decisions that Jennifer Beck and her kindergarten students were making as they retold the story, Tacky and Trouble, not only retold it in oral language, but also told it in written language. I'll begin by sharing with you um, Jennifer's rationale for why she engaged the children in this particular experience. Jennifer is engaging her children in uh, reading aloud a lot of stories and talking about them and then uh, retelling the story, one of them, whichever their choice will be, as part of a community writing uh, lesson. Jennifer is doing this because of academic content standards that she is expected to teach to her kindergarten students as she was looking over the North Carolina academic content standards, she saw that as a kindergarten teacher, she was expected to teach her children to retell stories. She was also expected to teach her children that stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And she was supposed to engage her children in a writing process so that the children would understand how to put down a story on paper including the conventions of written language. In addition, um, Jennifer wanted to emphasize oral language competence. As her children came into, into her kindergarten classroom, she knew that she, they needed more experiences in being users of uh, language, both oral language and written language. So as part of this um, unit of study, she wanted to be sure to include a lot of talk, a lot of conversation that would increase their competence in oral language as well as then lend itself to being to an increased competence in using written language. It was January when I contacted uh, Jennifer Beck and asked her if she'd be willing to work with me as I wrote this chapter for our book. At that time, Jan uh, in January, Jennifer was busy reading a lot of the stories about Tacky, the penguin who's always in trouble. If you know um, the stories of Tacky, uh, written by Helen Lester, you know that, that Tacky is a feisty little penguin who's always marching to the beat of a different drummer. Um, Jennifer loves these stories, and over the years she knew that the children in her kindergarten classrooms also loved the stories as well. She read them several of the Tacky stories, including this one, Tacky and Trouble. Uh, the children love Tacky and Trouble because, of course, once again, in this book, Tacky gets himself into a problem. In this book, Tacky and Trouble, Tacky decides that he doesn't want to take a nap and rest with the rest of his companions. What he really wants to do is go out on the icebergs and maybe even go for a sail. And he does. But like in any good story, a little bit of tension comes in and Tacky sees himself not next to his friends on the iceberg, but suddenly he's afloat and the wind has caught his shirt. It's acting like a sail and it takes him away, far, far away to the tropical islands where he runs into still another problem. His problem there is that he meets an elephant that he thinks is a rock. Is not. The rock, or elephant, which he calls Rocky, then thinks that Tacky is a bouquet of flowers, which he is not. 
the elephant takes Tacky to her um, picnic table because she really does need a beautiful bouquet of flowers for the final touch. Uh, takes Tacky quite a bit of work and energy to convince the um, the elephant that he really is a penguin, that he's not a bouquet of flowers. When he finally convinces her, she lets him go and he sets sail back, let me see if I can find the final pages, sets sail back to um, his friends. And his friends, although they always get a little bit upset with Tacky when he leaves, miss him a lot when he's gone, and is very happy that he finally comes back home. So that's the story of Tacky in Trouble. This is the story that the children decided to retell um, in the series of community writing lessons. What um, Jennifer had done in the past, earlier in the school year, in retelling stories, is that she would begin by taking a large piece of paper and on this large piece of paper, the children would uh, draw out the setting for the story. So for example, when they did the three pigs, you can see that the children have done three houses, the straw house, the stick house, and the house of bricks. She did this for a reason. She has one long piece of paper so that they see that the whole story is in sequence. She then uh, has the children begin to dramatize the story. Remember that one of her focus uh, focuses is on uh, developing oral language competence and at the same time that they're developing that skill of being an, uh, a storyteller, they're developing their understanding of sequencing of story and their ability to use oral language in retelling the story. So once the story map is made, she then lets the children dramatize the story several times. The children will dramatize the story several times so that they're internalizing the story that they have heard, whether it's the three little pigs or, in this case, the three billy goat scruff. They dramatize the story using puppets as they go uh, along their story map with the setting uh, you know, already in place that they themselves had drawn. And then, after they do that, they begin to write text for the story. So she's done a lot of work already helping the children um, as storytellers know what the story is about, think about the language that they want to use as they write their own story, and um, at the same time build that competency in oral language. This time, um, she is going to add something to the story uh, telling experience. Where here, in the first two examples I shared with you, the three pigs and the three billy goat scruff, the children had one long piece of paper so that they would start at the beginning of the story and move through the story in sequence with the, the support of the illustrations that they have drawn. She just has decided in um, the retelling of Tacky and Trouble that they are going to divide the, uh, the story paper, the mural paper, into three parts or three panels. She's doing this because, as I said earlier, she needs to teach children the beginning, middle, and end. At, in January, she feels it's time for her to highlight beginning, middle, and end. She felt one way she could do that is by separating that one long piece of paper into three separate parts, one for the beginning, one for the middle, and one for the end. So that's what um, Jennifer did. What Jennifer um, hadn't thought about when she, uh, when she divided the paper into parts is that she made it into three equal pieces of paper. And Jennifer and I have talked about this. We as story writers ourselves know that stories usually have fairly short beginning, fairly short ending, but most of the action is occurring in the middle. That's where the bulk of this story is happening. Once he leaves, you know, and this iceberg is afloat, it's all that tension and drama until he finally sets sail and gets back home to his companions at the South Pole. The same thing uh, is true in many stories. 
So the dilemma for the children in um, this particular way of separating the pieces of paper was that they had a panel for the beginning, a panel for the end, and they needed to include a lot of information in that middle panel. What I'd like to share with you in this conversation is just some of the decision making that the children uh, uh, made in order to do that and how we can see that children who are given opportunities to be um, thinkers and problem solvers can figure out problems that we probably would think we ourselves could not determine. Let me show you the three panels that um, the children eventually um, design. This is their first panel with the beginning of the story and you can see they have labeled the beginning beginning so each panel is going to be labeled uh, its part beginning middle end. They have also have a little bit of um, dialogue on this panel so there's not a lot of text just a little bit of dialogue that's coming from the book it's what the characters in the book are saying so that's our first panel our second panel is the middle part and you can see in the middle part where the children have um, divided the middle panel into two parts, the sky into two parts, a night part and a daytime part, and that's what we're going to talk a lot about, along with, again, some speech bubbles to talk about what's happening in the story from the point of view of the characters. And finally, our, our end panel, the last panel, where Tacky is on his way home and um, looking forward to meeting his companions again, and they're looking forward to seeing him. So those are the three panels we're going to look more carefully at this middle panel. We're going to spend some time talking about the decision making that occurred in the cooperative learning group that did the artwork around this middle panel and why that's important for our children as um, learners to have those kinds of opportunities to be problem solvers. In um, the community writing lessons that uh, Jennifer was engaging her children. The children will work together to compose a list of the illustrations that should appear on each page. So for example, in our middle panel, the children said that they wanted to make sure that there were trees bending in the wind. They wanted that in the pictures. They wanted to have stars and they wanted to have sun. You might wonder why they wanted to have all that in the middle panel. And it's very interesting to me to think about that in terms of what the children were doing as readers, as they were connecting that reading and writing experience or uh, that reciprocity between reading and writing. In the storybook, Tacky and Trouble, you can see this page right here, lots of blue sky. You can see the trees kind of bending in the wind the way the children had asked to have the illustrators depict on their own uh, murals. But the text here says, uh, on he sailed, on and on and on, through sunny days and starlit nights. So as the children who had heard these stories many times um, and knew the language of the book, as they were thinking about what kinds of illustrations needed to be on that middle panel. They said they needed to have stars for the starlit nights. They needed to have sun for the sunny days. So the elapse of time that Helen Lester included in her own written language, the children are now putting into their illustrations. The challenge then was going to be for the group of illustrators at um, the art center to use this list, which is now the resource that they are going to use to develop their own um, illustration and figure out how are they going to um, put a sun and stars and moon all in this middle panel. There was a little group there that was working together and um, they seemed to see no difficulty in it. They got together and one of them said, well, we could divide this, the sky in half. We could have 
some of it night and some of it day. So what the children did is divided the sky in half. Some of them worked on the night, some of them worked on the day. So what they did in their illustration is captured in art what Helen Lester showed the children in through written language taking that written language, transferring it into to the art here. Um, I thought that that showed a lot of problem solving on the part of the children and what can happen in a language rich classroom where children are allowed to think through their own problems uh, as um, they're facing different tasks, whether it's at the art center or whether it's in some other aspect of managed independent learning. Once the children had developed their pictures for all of the panels, they began writing the text for the panels. I remember one of uh, Jennifer's focuses is oral language development and the retelling of stories and the understanding of beginning, middle, and end. She chose in this particular story map not to have a lot of narrative on these pictures. So we have the speech bubbles as I said before rather than a lot of, um, of narrative. The reason she did that is that um, if there was just some talk and dialogue then as the children would retell the story they could use their own skills as language users and storytellers for all the narrative that surrounds the talk that they would read on each panel. After the children had completed the murals and the panels um, for each uh, section, the beginning, the middle, and end, were hung on the walls, the children then would go back and retell the story. They themselves were the narrators of the story, which was one of Jennifer's goals, increasing their competence to be flexible language users, not depending on the written language necessarily. And they would move from that narrat being the narrator to reading the text, which was a, a minimal amount of text on the page. So from narrator to reading the words of the characters on the page or the dialogue, back to being a narrator, back to reading um, the dialogue on the page. That flexibility, uh, which was increasing their competence in being storytellers uh, and users of oral language as well as readers of written language. In this um, chapter, there is a little bit more discussion about some of the other decisions that the children made as they illustrated the text, as they decided on what language that they wanted to include on the story map. In addition, uh, we've included some charts that we think will be helpful to you as teachers. Uh, one of them is a timeline that shows how a teacher um, takes a unit of study and starts with reading stories aloud to children, then uh, has children have additional experiences retelling the stories to develop their competence, dramatizing the stories to rehearse the language of the stories, um, and then moving into community writing lessons where they're making lists to plan their stories or planning sheets, where they're then uh, writing the, the text that will then appear on the murals and putting it all together as a story for themselves to, to read and retell or for their friends across the hall to do the same. Thank you for uh, joining me in the discussion of my chapter I've enjoyed talking.